This is a display stand for your 8 and 9 stud wide Speed Champions cars that has a modular design with capabilities of stacking vertically as high as you want. I have designed a universal, one size fits all display solution. These are the 30 Speed Champ cars that LEGO sold from 2020 to present time, all crammed on one Linman table. So I was thinking this display solution would keep our car collections more organized and contained while giving it a prestigious feel. In fact, when you stack a bunch of these up together, it kind of looks like a Carvana uh, vending machine. I feel like this is a good technique for displaying collections both big and small. You can start off with one, two, or a few modules and add on as your collection of speed champions or custom cars grow. If you have seen my first prototype version of these in my previous video, you will have seen that I was building these stands with different sizes and placing cars in different categories based on their length and wheel span. That got complicated and I wasn't happy about having so much variance. Not only that, but some cars could only fit on the top tier. We engineers can sometimes overcomplicate things. If you did like version one, you will love version two. If you're enjoying this content, please consider subscribing. This channel has nearly reached 1,000 subs. Version 2 of this display rack also allows more room for those cars with oversized spoilers and such. So there's no more folding of spoilers. And I did a lot of thought testing, building, unbuilding, and rebuilding. And this is what I came up with. This is derived from my prototype category B display rack. B was longer than A, but shorter than C. If you didn't watch the previous video, then don't worry about it. All you need to know is that you can fit all 30 cars with this one size. So the only pieces needing reconfigured are the tiles and one by two by two thirds slopes, depending on the wheel span and dimensional aspects of the car. Other revisions to this platform include improved symmetry and structural stability. On my previous version, I had some 2x2 two two modified plates with only two studs. I'm now using 2x2 two two plates with four studs just to give more clutch power. Also, the leg supports, I had a jumper plate on top. But now I have these 2x2 two two corner bricks. So what I found out in between my first video and this video is that structural stability is very important when you're moving things around or stacking these up really tall. And also the corner bricks are designed specifically for this Valkyrie to fit that front diffuser in those uh, little cubbies. I also think these corner bricks improve the display by allowing a little bit more visibility that would otherwise be obstructed. Now the remainder of this video will be a DIY tutorial, ballpark pricing, and I'll go over some tips on ordering the pieces based on my own research. So you need one platform and four legs for each car. However, if you want to, you know, box this up completely, you know, it's your own personal preference, you may want to get an extra platform, you know, for your top tier, if you don't want a car sitting on top. On the other hand, if you want to save some money, and this is the car sitting on top of your display rack, you don't have to order legs for it if you don't want to box it in. Now let's go over the details of how to build these platforms. It's going to be pretty much the same technique for each car, except for the positioning of these uh, one by two by two thirds slopes and some of the tiles. But the genius behind this, sorry for patting myself on the back, is that you're gonna use all of these pieces and have no leftovers. So every car is gonna have all of these pieces used, no extra pieces. So with that said, let's get started. Um, let me just go over real quick uh, the pieces I'm using. I'm gonna have the parts listed in the description of this video, but you've got four two by four tiles, six, 1x4 tiles, 2 1x3s, 2 1x2s, 2 1x1s, 8 1x2x2 slopes, 
four two by two plates. These are minifigure stands that you can save yourself money if you have a lot of CMF, um, you know, collectible minifigures. And that's what I'm using. So I don't have to order a bunch of those. You have three two by six plates, two, what is that? Two by 10 plates, one two by 12 plate, and two two by 16 plates. So what I'm gonna do first, I'm gonna use one of these two by six plates and put on these minifigure stands as such. Actually, I'm gonna make two of those. All right, now I'm gonna take these two by 16 plates, attach them here where two studs are left hanging out there because that's where your two by two plates are going. All right, next I'm going to use this two by 12 plate. Whoop, nope. I'm not gonna use it there. I'll tell you in a minute why I'm not. I'm gonna use this two by six because you don't want all of your seams to be in a line because you know this platform won't be as structurally stable. So once you're finished, you're gonna have this seam offset from these ones. It'll just be a more stable um, result. So I'm gonna use these two by four tiles and place them as such. And now I'm going to place my 2x12 plate there. All right, I'm going to put my 2x4 tiles here. These are the 2x10s. And now attach this here. 2x2 two two plates at the end. All right, there's what we got so far. All right, now we're gonna size up our car to see where we wanna place those sloped elements, where we want those wheels to rest. So I'm looking at the front. Hey, this car sits flush with the front and rear minifigure stands. So I want my wheel rest to be right there. So I'm just gonna put these in these spots here to mark, mark that location so I know where I'm gonna put all my tiling to. Sorry if you hear a little green brick in the background. He just woke up from nap time. Okay, that's where I want them. So now let's tile this thing up. So I'm gonna take this one by three tile here that'll fit perfectly under that sloped piece here. I'm gonna use a one by four there. Coming from this side, um, I'll use a one by four. All right, little green brick is outside my studio asking for me. All right, I'm gonna use a one by two there. We'll hide that little one by one underneath this slope. And we'll do the same with the other side. Okay, I put some Paw Patrol on for little green brick. So I finished tiling the other side the same way. And now our car fits nicely on this platform. Now let's say we want to change this up for the Pagani Utopia. Okay, so the wheel span is a lot different. The overall size of the car is a lot different. So we want to kind of center it, you know, on this platform. So it looks like if I move these wheel rests back one stud and these wheel rests forward one stud, we should be good. So that's what I'm gonna do here. Take apart these tiles. All right, we're gonna use one by two and the one by three tile up here. There's multiple ways of doing this, but I'm trying to make this look decent. Obviously, you would do the same thing on the other side, but I'm not going to take the time. I'm just going to 
show you that these wheels will now fit within those rests and it's pretty much centered onto this platform. So let's talk about where to find all these pieces. Most people aren't going to have all of these pieces in their spare collection. In fact, I had to rob some sets that I had that weren't even opened. Some large sets as well um, for these corner bricks especially. But I only had enough black elements to make these two platforms and four legs. So yeah, you can go brick owl, brick link to save you a little bit of money, but I don't want to have to go through so many different sellers because ultimately you're you're going to be buying a lot of these corner bricks and that's going to be the driving cost. Um, but to get one platform and four legs off of Lego's pick a brick online, it's going to cost you about $8. So $8 per card will get you this. You know, it'll be extra to get a top platform to enclose your car. But, you know, if you just have this kind of setup where you have one car on the bottom and on the, the top, you don't have to buy the four additional legs. So that that's what I was looking at. Um, now, one thing about ordering directly from LEGO is you also qualify for promos if you meet the minimum threshold and it's not theme specific, like a Ninjago or a City. So right now they have an Easter promo going on, so I would qualify for the little Easter bunny in a basket. But I'm going to hold off on ordering all of these pieces needed for all 30 of my cars until there's a, a better promo available. So tell me what you think about this system. I think if you like what you see here, you're gonna really love it in person.